Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Penny. I am a master esthetician in Portland, Oregon, and I'm excited that you're here with me today because it's time for the Friday Q&A. This is the video that I am doing every single Friday where I try to answer and address as many of your comments and your questions from the comment section below. So if you have any other questions for me, please do leave them in the comment section. Can't do this video without your questions. I've got some great topics to cover today, you guys. So let's get right into it. This is from Graham Bilby, and I get this one all the time, and it says, more affordable skincare options, please. I'm serious, you guys. Every single day I get two, three, four of those kind of comments. And I have some really great skincare that I wanna share with you today. I'm just gonna go through it really quickly. Super, super, super affordable. Now, first of all, you guys know that I have been going through um, and testing out snail secretion filtrate and that kind of stuff. And I picked up, uh, back when I was doing that video, prior to that, I picked up the CauseRx Advanced Snail 92 All-in-One Cream. Looks like this. Guys, this is a jelly texture. It's 92% snail mucin. It looks like this, if you can see. And I'll, I'll even show you like this. Do you see how that is? Now, even though it looks kind of, you know, slimy like that, you guys, I can take a generous amount and put it on my face and it soaks right in and it does not feel slimy or sticky on my face. It definitely soaks right in. This has become my preferred, you know, go-to right after I cleanse my skin. I love this product so much. I did pick up from CauseRx the serum. I think it's 96% snail secretion. I like that okay. I think that it's okay, but this, I love this. So in this particular all-in-one cream from CauseRx, we have Snail secretion filtrate, which is an antioxidant. It's a moisturizer. It's a humectant. It is a fantastic ingredient. We have betaine, which is a moisturizer slash humectant. Another great ingredient. You guys, we have sodium hyaluronate, which is AKA-ish hyaluronic acid. It's a humectant. That is fantastic. We have panthenol, which is a soothing moisturizer and humectant. That is a great ingredient. Allantoin, you guys, that is a soothing, fantastic ingredient. And we also have down towards the end of the list, adenosine, and that is a cell communicating ingredient and it is also fantastic. There are so many great ingredients in this. It is fragrance free, it is also alcohol free, and it's essential oil free. It is a beautiful all-in-one cream. I am putting this on damp skin because of the hyaluronic acid that is in there and some of the other humectants. I just like it on the damp skin. I'm trying to trap some of that water in my skin and you know, kind of trying to prevent something called transepidermal water loss. I'm letting my skin completely dry and then I'm going on with whatever routine at night, specifically like my Retin-A. And I'm feeling like this is helping to buffer and soothe and just mitigate the unwanted side effects of Retin-A. Okay, and then I'm using this in the morning as well. I'm just layering it in and I genuinely am loving this. Guys, I think it's like $20, $22. It's gonna last me forever. So the next things are all in the cleanser realm. Now, two of them are around between six and eight dollars. Now, the first one is by The Ordinary. This is their Squalane cleanser. I actually picked this up at Ulta while I was checking out and I grabbed it. It was seven dollars and something. And I will say it is only 1.7 fluid ounces. And actually, as affordable skincare goes, that's kind of a tiny little cleanser for seven plus dollars so this is affordable in the fact that it's only seven plus dollars but you don't get a ton i don't have to use a huge amount of it but what i really like about this you guys i'm gonna go through what's in this guy because everything that is in that one is uh, comforting to your skin. It's perfect if your skin is sensitized, if you feel like you have dehydrated skin. It is perfect if you are going through, you know, using Retin-A, that kind of stuff. So in this is, first of all, squalane, of course, and that's a great ingredient. It is an emollient. It's found naturally in our sebum. It helps to kind of lubricate our skin. It's also found in olives. Okay, so what else is in here is glycerin. Glycerin is another superstar ingredient that is a humectant. 
And then you just go through tons of emollients. There, I mean, the list of emollients is just down and none of them are particularly stellar, but not a one of them is bad. Then you get to the bottom and you have tocopherol, which is an antioxidant and no fragrance in here, you guys, no alcohol, no essential oils. It's a really great, gentle, no foaming, just kind of comforting cleanser. So if you are somebody who has sensitized skin and you're just looking for moisture, this one isn't gonna strip you of any of the moisture that you already have. So loving that one. And I keep getting you know requests to um, review The Ordinary and I am picking up their products and kind of testing them out as I can. And this one seems to be a hit. The next cleanser, I've shown this one before, but I wanna share it again, and it's by e.l.f. This one's six bucks, you guys. And unlike The Ordinary, you actually get 3.38 ounces. So you get a little bit more in this one. Now, the ingredients in this one are good. They are not as good as that squalene, and I'll tell you why. First of all, it is also alcohol free. It's a soothing, soothing jelly texture cleanser and no foam, nothing like that. I find it to be extremely comforting. Where it does go a little bit sideways is the very last ingredient on this list is fragrance. You do find that often in your cleansers. It doesn't bother me even in the least. I really like this cleanser. Now, the ingredients that are great in here, you guys, it has betaine, which is a moisturizer humectant. This one has coconut fruit juice, which is also a emollient moisturizer humectant. This one has aloe, it has cucumber, it has panthenol. Those are all great ingredients. You guys, it has allantoin, which is a great ingredient. It has xylitol, which in skincare is a moisturizer slash humectant. The only other thing that I don't like in here, and this is an ingredient that I did talk about in my um, foundation video, it's also in that Tarte Babassu, is a something called isopropyl myristate. It's an emollient, but it does get a five on the, on the level of being comedogenic. So if you are someone who is acne prone, you might wanna be careful with this one because it has the potential to clog your pores. I've had no issue with that whatsoever. So if you are someone who is dry and dehydrated and you, don't, you aren't bothered by a little bit of fragrance in your cleansers, this little $6 jelly cleanser is Fantastic. If you are somebody who likes the no foam, that jelly consistency, I'll show you guys, that jelly consistency that is, you know, really comforting to wash your face with. Oh my so gosh. It's all in all, those are some really fantastic, fantastic affordable skincare options for those of you who keep asking for them. Okay, this one comes from P. Yellen and she says, I'm assuming it's she, hi Penny, I love your channel. Thank you for all your hard work. Thank you for saying that. I'm not clear on why we should be using high molecular weight HA. This is the information I found from an ingredient website. The difference of, and then this, this is in quotes, the difference of the regular high molecular hyaluronic acid and low molecular weight hyaluronic acid is that the low molecular weight HA has been split into smaller fragments. Thereby, these smaller fragments can no longer form a gel with water like the large molecules, but they can penetrate the skin much easier and have actually a better anti-irritant and regenerating effect once absorbed by the skin. That's sort of true, sort of not true. The high molecular form of HA has a better hydrating effect than the low molecular form of HA. And then she said she'd love some insight. Okay, guys, here's the deal with the weight of hyaluronic acid. First of all, the large weight HA is what we already have in our body. When there is a wound, uh, our, that large molecular weight HA is split up into fragments. Those little fragments, that now low molecular weight hyaluronic acid, one of its jobs is to kick into action the inflammatory response to start the wound healing process. It's, it's its job and it's highly necessary. It's a great thing. So when I'm talking about weights of hyaluronic acid, I'm talking about when in reference to microneedling because that's a wound. That's what's going on. We are definitely causing a controlled wound in order to set off the wound healing process so that we can generate some new collagen, you know, have our body kick off more growth factors, all of that kind of stuff. Where the problem exists is there's this delicate balance between inflammation and 
wound healing and also aging. Now you want to have a certain amount of inflammation so that the wound can actually get healed. The body is going to do that naturally. You start microneedling, you have no serums on. Let's just say we could, we could microneedle with no serum whatsoever. The body sees this as an injury and it starts that off. Hyaluronic acid is fragmented. The low molecular weight hyaluronic acid goes to work, kicks into action the inflammatory response so that those little wounds that it perceives from the action of microneedling start to get healed. And the product of that is growth factors and collagen and all this great stuff. Whatever, there's a balance there. There's a balance going on in our own body. Whatever we choose to put on with that microneedling has got to be anti-inflammatory. If you flood the area with more low molecular weight hyaluronic acid, the balance is off in our wound healing process and we are over the top with inflammation. And inflammation is definitely re related. And in my mind, I look at inflammation as pro aging 100 we need a little bit of that inflammation to start off the wound healing process and to heal our wounds it, it happens for a reason too much inflammation and we have pro tumor we have pro aging it's just not a good thing so when we're talking about a wound that's microneedling high molecular weight hyaluronic acid just to keep the balance of anti-inflammatory stuff going on and not to overwhelm our body, our face, wherever we're microneedling with inflammation. Now, when we're talking about just topical with our skincare and that kind of stuff, in my opinion, and this is definitely debatable as well, but in my opinion, you can mix your weights of hyaluronic acid when you're just talking about, you know, your face cream or that kind of stuff when we're not talking about a wound response. I think then, sure, you could go ahead and use some low molecular weight hyaluronic acid, medium weight, you know, um, hyaluronic acid, that kind of stuff, because yes, it does penetrate a little bit better. It's going to give you a little bit more of an immediate effect. But I got to tell you that some studies are actually showing that our body is systemically, that hyaluronic acid, the low molecular weight that you put on topically that had nothing to do with a wound response, no microneedling, nothing like that. It, it does get into our system. It is able to get in there and in turn may be able to cause unwanted inflammation. So this question, I did have a discussion with this person in the comment session, but I thought I would address it a little bit here. This one says, as a master esthetician, do you ever work on stretch marks on the abdomen? With diligent use, can a 1.5 derm millimeter derma roller or a pen really remove old stretch marks from pregnancy? It seems impossible, but some derma roller sites promise that. Okay, so here's the deal. First of all, what is a stretch mark? It's important to know that, you know, why stretch marks happen. So we know that stretch marks can happen in pregnancy from the skin stretching kind of quickly. It can happen from various um, steroid use and it can also happen from a condition called Cushing's disease. So there's various reasons for us to get stretch marks. When the skin is torn like that, the epidermis actually atrophies and it also loses its melanocytes. So that's why it's kind of, um, it, it has no pigment in it. And the melanocytes, depending on the size of the stretch marks, they're not anywhere to be found. They're, they're definitely not in that stretch mark area. So the problem with stretch marks is twofold. First of all, you need to bring some pigment back to the area. And unfortunately, the melanocytes, it's too far for them to migrate whether or not you needle or whatever, it's very difficult to repigment that area because the melanocytes just cannot travel that far. And the other thing is that we have that epidermal atrophy. Now, what you can do is if they're very, very old, yes, you could treat them with a 1.5 roller or pen and you would have to do that. I can't even tell you how many times you would have to do that. I mean, month after month, because it would be once a month to get any kind of results. And I would really say that any results that you did get would be extremely subtle. The truth is that there is so much damage from stretch marks, so much actual damage, not only to that atrophy in the epidermis, but below that, there, when they look at it under a microscope, the actual cells underneath there are configured completely differently 
than normal skin. They're in the patterns that the cells are in are completely ruined, honestly. So the reason why I'm saying this is not to take away hope from anyone, but it's to arm you with the knowledge that don't pay someone to do a bunch of treatments to you in the hopes that you're gonna get rid of your stretch marks because it's not gonna happen. I absolutely think it gets over-promised and always under-delivered and people waste their money. So microneedling can help, but it is so extremely subtle. If you would like a little bit of a subtle improvement, if any improvement whatsoever would be good for you, then go for it. Microneedle, you're gonna have to microneedle probably at a one or a one and a half, just because that depth, what we're going for is we're treating it like a scar and the mechanical action of the needles is gonna break up that scar. And then of course, we're also hoping for some growth factor release and that kind of stuff so that we can thicken that epidermis and kind of bring it back just a little bit, even though it is really, I mean, when you think of the word atrophy, think of a muscle when it's not used ever and how it just kind of shrivels. That's what that epidermis has done. It's completely atrophied. And so, you know, it, it's very, very difficult to bring it back. Now, I will tell you that in office, I have seen people get treated with something called Fractura, and there's many different, um, different companies call it different things, but it is very deep microneedles, three millimeter microneedles with Fractura, and they, it also uses um, radio frequency. I actually have seen some improvement on abdominal stretch marks with that treatment. And you have to do multiple treatments, but I definitely have seen improvement and certainly more improvement than microneedling would ever do. So no, I don't typically microneedle stretch marks because I don't think, I don't think it's right to take people's money, even microneedling at deep depths, because the results are gonna be so incredibly subtle that it's, it's just not worth it for people to pay me to do that. So I hate to take away that hope, but I think it's, it's important to be realistic and it's important to be armed with that knowledge so that you don't waste your money. Okay, so the next question is such a good question, you guys. Uh, this one is from Karen and it says, after medical needling, will using a red light or a serum with collagen interrupt the collagen cycle? That's a great question, you guys. And I, that makes me so excited that people are even thinking about the collagen cycle because it's so, so important when it comes to microneedling. But the answer is no, it definitely will not. And what's important to know about LED is that it is this non-invasive treatment that is anti-inflammatory and that can really help to augment microneedling. It is called for in protocols and its mechanism for helping to boost collagen is different than microneedling. So it's almost like coming at the collagen and the production of collagen from a different angle instead of interrupting it. Now, what you need to know is that in the protocols, the LED that they're talking about is 830 nanometers, which is near infrared. And the cool thing about that is our body's able to take in that light and our cells are able to convert that light into energy. That energy is adenosine triphosphate. It's the same energy that we talk about when we're talking about microcurrent, which is very, very interesting. I have video on microcurrent, I will link that. Adenosine triphosphate is like the life source in our body. So we're able to take in that light and our cells convert that to ATP. The ATP in turn helps to boost the collagen production. So it's totally different than the mechanical release uh, or the mechanical action of microneedling and the release of growth factors and the stimulation of our fibroblasts to produce collagen. It's different than that. So it augments the microneedling session. And the other thing about it is that it's super, super calming. I definitely want to say that you have to be careful if you do have melasma. And I know that a lot of science isn't even gonna say this, but you can lay under an LED machine and feel hot just because you're, you know, there's a mask on you or whatever. That's enough for some people to trigger melasma. So it is definitely important if you have melasma and you want to get LED treatments, that is awesome. I always would ask for a fan or I would use a fan if you're doing LED treatments at home and you are medical needling. So if you're doing 0.5 millimeters or deeper, look for near infrared LED. I'm actually on the hunt for one that I can have at home home because I've got some great LED devices that I use and I use the blue and I, I use the green. Love it, love it, love it. But I'm looking for one that is specifically near infrared. If I find one, I will definitely link it because that specific wavelength is perfect for 
ex right after you microneedle. I mean, it is like the perfect augment and studies show that cells actually grow at a 150 to 200% faster rate when exposed to near infrared LED. And that's fantastic when you are considering what we're trying to do with microneedling and collagen and all that kind of stuff. So no, LED definitely does not interrupt the collagen cycle. Okay, you guys, so those are all the questions for this week. I really, really hope that some of you got your questions answered. Well, I, hope I look forward to every single one of your questions. And like I say, every single Friday, guys, I have a rolling list on my phone that I will try to get to every single Friday. So keep those questions coming. I hope you guys have a fantastic weekend and I will talk to you again very, very soon.